Hey guys, I'm Glenn and I'm going to show you how you can build your very own gaming desk. But first, I'm going to show you a quick overview of it before we get into the build. Minimalist is the key here. I needed a large desk and I also wanted to give the illusion that it took up less space. In the future, this will be my gaming desk. Hence the reason I add LEDs. Plus, you guys know I love LEDs. There will be times that I need to clear off the desk. With the addition of the open compartment, this is the only place to store anything. And to top it off, I also added a stylish power grommet. The desk is made in Tyler from plywood wrapped with veneer. The legs are only attached with two bolts, making it easy to break down and relocate. This video is brought to you by Rockler Woodworking and Hardware. For starters, I knew I needed a large desk, so I started by marking out a large section on a sheet of plywood. I used an aluminum tube as a straight edge just to carry out the line along the marks. To cut the sheet goods down to size, I'm going to be using my DIY track saw guide. And I wanted to add support on both sides, this way when I cut the plywood, it can catch the plywood instead of falling on the floor. And after making a rip on the long side, it's time to take care of the short side. Here's a quick tip of what I do from time to time. A lot of times I cut my sheet goods down a bit larger than I actually need to, so I can then take it over to my table saw and cut it at the final width. If I'm looking to duplicate cuts, which is what I'm doing here, I just wanna make sure that I can get them accurate every time. So ripping them finally on the table saw would definitely give me that result. Now I do have a set of plans in the work and it should be coming fairly soon. So this will be all the cuts that's in the plans. So as a way of speeding things up during the build, I did transfer some of the measurements onto the side of the plywood and that way I can kind of speed things up and grab the pieces that I needed at the time. Now some may think that this is a bit of an overkill, but I am going for a heavy top and I want this to be pretty sturdy. So I did just laminate it two sheets of plywood. You can use one sheet and then wrap the trim, but maybe a one by two and that would give a similar look, but lighter. Now you don't have to douse the entire top with wood glue. I did want to save some of the wood glue I had, but I made sure I got the edge of the plywood along with some of the inside area. That way everything is clamped together super tight. And when you're working in an area with limited space, everything become a work area, even my table saw. It's really important that you get the edge clamped because you don't want to see the seam going around the plywood. Now it is important to check to make sure that there is no bow as the plywood is drying because you're going to be stuck with it that way if that's the case. And right now I'm on to making the legs and I'm going to be using the clamp it jig because these just make it so much easier to hold each plywood in place and keeping them square while I apply the glue and also join them together. Now you can use a nail gun or you can also use some screws and I actually showed both methods in the video. Being that it's gonna be wrapped with veneer, you can just go with screws if you don't have a nail gun. Now I do want the legs to also have that same thickness as the top so I'm gonna also double up on the plywood as well. And just as the top, I wanna make sure that I apply glue going along the edge and also going down the center as well. Now add all the sides and then I can take these bandy clamps and hold the plywood together. Now what I like about these clamps is that the band on them actually keep the plywood level with each other. Now I'm gonna take a band clamp and wrap it around the entire structure. Now this is a perfect application for band clamps because the more we tighten this up, the more everything square itself up. And at this point, I can finish adding all the screws and then sand it down. Now, although you can go with any method to finish off the legs, I decided to use veneer. And one of the main reasons for that is I got the veneer super cheap. It was on clearance and I believe it was $4 a box. Now, other than this type of veneer, the one with adhesive on it, I've never used veneer before other than this kind. So this one is fairly easy to me. All you have to do is just iron it on and then trim it up. Now to speed things up a bit, I pulled out the router because this just gave a much cleaner finish and also a quicker process. After applying it to the entire perimeter, I also applied it to the open edge. Now, although there's not a lot of mess to deal with when dealing with the iron on veneer, the only problem is if you don't apply it straight and you need to maneuver it some, it's really tough to remove it because the adhesive is super strong. And I tried to get the veneer butted up to each other the best I could. And I also applied the same process to the top. Instead of using the veneer though, I had found some two inch edge band. I was able to wrap the top and eliminate any seams. The way the desk is designed is meant to look super simple, but also have a cool design to it as well. So I do want the top to look like it's elevated. And that's what this piece do. So what I wanna do now is mark the holes that I'm gonna be using to screw the legs on, because the legs will only be attached with two screws. 
This section actually take two pieces of wood stacked on top of each other. Since there's two bolts holding the legs on, I need to make sure that I drill the holes at the same time and the two bolts that's holding the legs on will be fastened to these two pieces of lumber. Place the T-nuts on the inside. The legs can be placed to your liking. I decided to push mine in about an inch from the edge and I used a piece of lumber to use that as a spacer. Then I traced the inside of that leg onto the top. Next, I'm going to trace that piece of lumber in a location where it needs to be mounted. Then I'm going to get the other piece of wood that's on drill, the one I told you that was on top, and drill a few holes in it so it can be mounted to the top. And I also edge band those as well. And for now, I'm going to set those to the side, sand everything down, get it all prepped and ready to go to apply finish. After I applied the veneer, everything have rough edges right now, but once I run that sander through it and lightly touch the edges, everything gonna start to look round over and look professional. And mainly on the sides where the two seams meet, I can apply some wood filler to fill the section in and give it a cleaner look. At this point, everything has been prepped, sanded, and ready to go. And right before I apply some stain, I'm gonna apply some wood conditioner because I don't want my finish to have any blotchiness in it. And at this point, I'm going to attach the wooden spacers that will sit between the top and the legs. This part get attached to the top first. And now I'm gonna attach the second part that does have the T-nut on the inside. Now, although you could glue these pieces, I decided not to glue them because I just wanna be able to have that flexibility later on if I needed to move them or make adjustment, I'll have that option. And at the bottom of the desk, there will be an open area that I can store my keyboard and mouse to keep the desktop clear. So this piece that I'm adding will support the bottom of that. Then I'll do the same thing on the opposite side. And like many of my past projects, I've always had a bit of a trouble committing to a certain color that I wanted to go with or finish that I wanted to put on that project. So it was pretty similar with this project as well, but I figured I couldn't go wrong if I go with the dark brown leg by starting off with that, then I can decide what to do at the top. So after applying and wiping off the stain, I started feeling like I picked the right choice, but I still have the battle to figure out later with the top. Now, as I'm editing the video, I'm like, really, you didn't finish staining the top? And somehow I didn't do that before I showed that piece. And now I'm going to route in the tracks for the LED strip. So I did set up two clamps on the top and I'm going to use those as stops. And if using a router is out of your comfort zone, you really don't have to route this in. It just give a cleaner look. The next thing I wanted to do was to hide the power cable and the way I was planning to do that was to drill from the outside and land as far as I could on the inside. I was hoping to land closer to the plywood that's in the upright position but I wasn't checking the angle of my bit and it exit out a little quicker than I hoped. So I'm just going to create a channel to get on the inside of that plywood and then that'll be it. That bottom storage that I referred to earlier, this will be one of the spacers that sits between that and the top. So I drilled a few holes in it on the face of the plywood. That way I can just install that and drill it right to the top. For now, I'm gonna leave that off until I'm finished painting the top so it's not in the way. So more than likely you'll see this desk in a lot of my upcoming videos and I wanted to go with a color that wasn't asking for attention. The first thought that came to mind is that white just made the most sense. I also painted the bottom side of the desk and I wanna put one coat here. For the top, I went with two coats. The paint I'm using is a pure white latex paint that also have built in primer just to kind of speed up the process some and I don't have to add many coats onto this. And after that was dry, I applied three coats of polycrylic. You're going to at least want to add two because using a brush you will have some streaks in it but the second coat will fill it in and the third coat will make it even better. Polycrylic is a great top coat for paint stain and many other finish. I added two light coats on the legs. I just didn't want this to be as shiny. As a tip, you're gonna want to apply the polycrylic in a dust-free zone, because anything that falls in it will stay in it and you'll see it. I did want this desk to have some kind of integrated power that was quickly accessible. And I found many power grommet, but this was the one that I liked the most because it had the simplest and cleanest look to it. 
Now this can be placed anywhere on the desk. I just happen to like this location from a visual standpoint. It just made sense to me. So to protect the surface, I'm gonna use masking tape and also apply a piece of wood at the bottom. That piece of wood will protect the surface from chipping. And now I can drill out the hole for the grommet. And just my luck, I had a three inch hole saw and a three and a quarter inch hole saw, but you actually need a three and an eighth inch hole saw. Either way, the holes still need to get drilled. And as you can see, the masking tape provide a real clean hold. The grommet should fit right into place and just add the net at the bottom to finish that off. Adding two screws should be enough to hold the back panel into place, which also would be a location to manage all your wires. I'm gonna cut the LED harness in half because I need to utilize both ends. One, I'm gonna extend the side on the LED and the other end, I'm gonna terminate it and use that to go to the controller. After twisting the wires, I lock them together by adding a little bit of solder. And to cover up the connection point, I'm gonna use shrinking tube. And to do that, I'm gonna use my heat gun, and you guessed it, shrink the tube. Now this is good as it is, but I didn't want it to go to an extra step and add another layer of shrink tube on that. And now that I have a newly extended harness, I can now run that through the hole and install the LED strip. So after adding the strip on the back, I thought about why not add it also inside that storage. But after adding it and seeing it in the end result, I'm still not sold on if I like it or not, but you guys can make the call on that. After soldering on the necessary conductors, I high glued the connection into place so that it didn't move. And then I also fastened the harness and then I went on to splicing the two harness together. From the splice point that was just made, I ended up with one cable that would then get plugged into the LED controller. And now I can attach the second piece of lumber which would also give me support for the bottom panel and also give me storage in the backside so I can hide the LED controller. And utilizing the same hole that the LED is passed through, I can also stick the IR receiver in that same location as well. And of course, we can't power this up without power, so I'm gonna run the transformer through the hole that I drilled on the far side, put a knot in it, and plug in the controller. The bottom panel can now be installed and screwed in. The legs are probably the easiest thing to attach. Basically, you're gonna use two screws. All you wanna do is just line it up and then the other holes should line up as well. Just install those screws and tighten it down. If you happen to make this desk and you're concerned about somebody looking under the desk and seeing the unsightly screws, you can always throw some screw caps on it to make the screws disappear. And the way this desk came out, it fits my needs and I'm happy with the end results. At my full-time job, I spend about six to seven hours a day sitting doing computer work. And then I come home and I'm editing and I'm spending a lot of time on the computer as well. So there is time that I get restless and do want to stand up and get some work done. So this adjustable sit stand table is like the perfect median. Now you can leave it on your desk, but I like to remove it when I'm not using it and then just kind of throw it back on the desk when I need it. Thank you guys for watching. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you never miss another one of my uploads. And if you like what I do and you wanna support what I'm doing, you can do so on patreon.com forward slash DIY creators. And also don't forget to let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. You can also throw me a like if you enjoyed the video. I'm Glenn with DIY Creators and I'll see you next time.